Okay, guys, so focus of discussion is patent rights. No? So when we talk about patent rights, let's first define who is the patient. So a mentioned to your patient is anyone who has requested to be evaluated by or who is being evaluated by any healthcare professionals. So for example, if somebody will come to you and then this person will request for you to take the blood pressure, that person is actually already considered to be your patient. You don't need to be admitted in the hospital for you to be considered a client or for you to be considered a patient. Okay? So for example, students, if you're dealing with patients in the rural health unit or in the clinic, are these already considered your patient or not? Makukonsider na ba silang patients or hindi pa? In the clinic or rural health unit, are they considered patients or not, guys? Considered, yes, sir. sir. Ah, sige. So you can use the chat box that to respond. So they are already considered to be your patients. Now, guys, these are some of the rights of your patients. And later on, we'll also um, remember that in every rights, there are accompanying responsibilities that your patient must also deal with. So, hindi lang always na sila lang yung may right, they also have the responsibilities for them to comply. But first, let's talk about these rights. Ma? Guys, when I talk about right, the right is commonly, um, rights are commonly differentiated with the term privileges. So, when I say students' rights, is it true to all or true to some only? When I talk about rights, is it true to all or true to some only? Your response is... Okay, so plus when I talk about your rights, your rights are true to all. Your rights are true to all. And then plus when I talk about privileges, it's uh, granted to many. Okay, it's granted to a few only. I mean, sorry, it's granted only to a few. Now again, when I say rights, it's true to all. When I say privileges, it's only granted to you. So for example, no? Everybody has a right to life. No? Everybody among all of us, we have the right to live. We have the right to life. But then class, when I talk about nursing, only a few classes has a privilege to practice being a nurse. So not everybody can practice nursing. Okay, So that's what we meant by privileges. So when we say privileges, privileges can be taken from the individual. However, rights cannot be taken from the individual. Now, let's talk about your rights of your patient. So guys, for the rights of your patient, one of the rights there that is being mentioned is the right to be treated with respect. So it's mentioned that you should have the right to be treated with respect. While, So when I say class, the right to be treated with respect, that's why we do not shout to our patients. Okay? We deal with them with respect regardless of their race, regardless of their religion. Then you also have your right to obtain medical records. In other words, if your patient students will be requesting for the medical records, you facilitate that request for their medical records. But if you will be asked, can the patient photocopy? Can the patient have a copy of the entire chart? If you will be asked, can the patient have a copy of the entire chart? What would be your response? Is it possible or not? Mm -hmm. Sige na. I want to see your responses in chat and then if you can even unmute. Yes, sir. Uh, Mm -hmm. Can the patient copy the entire no, chart sir. or photocopy oh, the entire sir. chart? Okay, so students, please be reminded that your patients would not photocopy the entire chart. Okay, they are not allowed to photocopy the entire chart. Okay, now some of you might be asking, sir, why not? No, because in fact, the chart is all about the patient, so why not? So, guys, you need to be reminded that the physical property of the chart belongs to the hospital. Again, the physical property of the chart is the ownership of the hospital. Now, class, your patients, it only contains information about your patient, but the physical property of the chart is owned by the hospital. So, it says here that the patient has the right to obtain medical records. What are the medical records that your patient can request? That would only include their lab results. That would also include the result of their diagnostic studies. And that would also include um, another one is the operative record. Another one is the operative record. These are the things that your patient could request. And these are the things that your patient could photocopy. Now, if the entire chart is needed, if the entire chart is needed, let's say, for example, you have um, we have a legal hearing. 
we have a hearing in court and then the entire chart is needed. Plus the medical records has the right to release the chart, has the responsibility, I mean, to release the chart to the court of law. And that could only be done by what we refer to as your subpoena duces tecum. That could only be done by your subpoena duces tecum. Okay? If you might be wondering if what is this subpoena, siguro if you're listening to use, you've heard of the word subpoena. So class, when I say subpoena, it is the, it is a document issued by the court no? or a quasi-judicial body. And when I say duces tecum, that is um, giving you the responsibility to bring the document to court. Okay? So if, for example, my legal hearing, halimbawa, the nurse is being trialed for negligence or malpractice, it will be the chart that can prove that as an evidence. No? So class, um, the court may issue a subpoena duces tecum to the medical records personnel. Now, the next question that you might need to answer is that, can the nurse bring can the nurse bring all of the chart to the court can the nurse bring all the chart to court what do you think is the response to that will that be a yes or no sige na guys mm -hmm. others no sir okay. so plus it's still a no it's still a no okay Plus, if there is a subpoena duces tecum, the subpoena duces tecum is issued to your medical director. If not the medical director, that will be the medical records officer of your hospital. So it will not be the nurse that will bring the chart to the court, but instead it's the medical director or the medical records officer because they will be the one who will be subpoenaed by the court. So, ibig sabihin, class, sila yung magdadala ng chart. Sila yung may responsibility na binigay ng law na dapat dalhin yung chart sa korte. If they will be unable to do that, they will be sued. They will be given another case class, which is what you refer to as contempt against the court of law. Okay? So, contempt against the court of law. Okay? So, the basic message here is that the patient can obtain medical records but then these medical records are only limited to the results of the diagnostics and then the laboratory test. And then as mentioned or as supported by the third right there, the patient has the right to privacy of medical records. That's why later on when you will become level 3 student nurse test, one of the things that you do in your duties is that you have your case studies. No? Even right now in level 2, you even have your case studies. So during your case presentation, is it okay for you to indicate the name of the patient, or shall we use initials only? What do you think? Initials only. Initials only. Okay, so class, what we can do is that you can have the initials only. Okay? Because who knows, among your classmates there, there's somebody who knows the patient. And then here you are talking about the patient with HIV. Here you are talking about the patient with cancer, whereas the patient has not even informed their family members about it. So even if we are students, please take note that you are obliged to ensure the privacy of your patients. Okay? Kindly take note of that. Now, another right of your patient is to write to make a treatment choice. So for example, if the, if the doctor recommended that, hey, patient, you need to undergo surgery. If the patient will ask, doc, do we have other options? These patient guys, this patient needs to be informed of all the other options that are available. Okay, the patient needs to be informed of all other options that are available. And then, for example, the patient opted, Doc, ayaw kong magpa-surgery. Parang gusto ko na lang mag-medications. Guys, the doctor need to talk again to the patient. But then the doctor, the doctor class could not force the patient to do it. Okay, the doctor class could not force the patient to do it. Because class, your patient has the right to make a treatment choice. Then another thing, class, your patient has the right to informed consent. When I talk about the right to informed consent, now when I say informed consent, meaning they have all the facts that will serve as the basis for them to make a decision. Okay? They need to have all the facts as a basis for them to make their decision. So class, it could not be an informed consent if the doctor forced the patient to undergo surgery. For example, the doctor said, hey, patient, you need to undergo surgery. This is the only surgery that can be done to you. That's not informed consent because when I say informed consent, guys, 
the doctor should be able to present the facts to the patient and should be able to present the options that the patient would have. Okay? Kung baga, when I say informed consent, as I would repeat, it means that you were well informed by the time that you made the decision. You were well informed by the time that you made the decision. If the information is lacking or if the information is withheld or if the information is kept from you, you are not making an informed decision. Okay, that's one thing that you need to remember. That's why in the hospital, whenever your patient will ask questions, huh? for example, picture a patient admitted yesterday. The patient was admitted yesterday and then today, let's say for example at 4 p.m., Today at 4 p.m., the patient is scheduled already for surgery. Okay, that's the schedule for surgery. Let's say, for example, you're the nurse on duty. At 3 p.m., the patient asks, Nurse, ano ang gagawin sa akin? The patient asks, Nurse, ano ang gagawin sa akin? That being said, guys, is the patient having an informed consent or not? No, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, nagtanong siya, di ba? Ano ang gagawin sa akin? That simply implies, class, that your patient is not aware of what will be done to him or her. So meaning, class, your patient is not having an informed consent with that. Okay? So kindly take note on that and be careful on that when you are dealing with your patients. Now, next, they also have the right to refuse treatment. As long as after they refuse treatment, the next thing that you will do is to educate them of the consequences. And then after you've educated them, you inform the doctor if they still refuse. Okay, so once they refuse, educate them, inform the doctor if they still refuse. Okay, those are the things that you will be doing. Okay, plus hindi pwede na pag-refuse nila, okay ma'am, babahay, kayo nang bahala sa buhay nyo. Okay? Or oftentimes ang reaction niya, mm -hmm. Punta-punta pa ng hospital, tapos ayaw naman magpagamot. Okay, you know, things like that. No? So please don't, don't say that uh, because your patient has the right to refuse treatment. But they can only outrightly refuse that if you have educated them if what will be the consequences. Then they also have the right to make decisions about end-of-life care. Okay? What is that intervention nga that we do when our patient, for example, suddenly have pulselessness and breathlessness? What do you call that intervention, guys, that we do if your patient is pulseless and breathless? CPR, sir. Okay, CPR. CPR. So, guys, your patient has the right to choose. Okay? Your patient has the right to choose. Can they do, will he want CPR or will he not want CPR? It's the right of your patient. Okay? So, for example, no, at my age right now, if I will decide that by the time that I will become pulseless and breathless, I don't want CPR to be done. You don't have any right to touch me, whether you, you value life, you value the life of that person, you don't have the right to touch me. And yes, Aya is right when saying that it is the DNR. Okay? So I have the right to make my decision to do not resuscitate. Okay? Do not resuscitate. Now, the argument there of others is this, eh, Sir Papano, kung gusto pa ng girlfriend, mabuhay siya. Papano kung gusto ng asawa at saka ng kids, mabuhay siya. Okay? Plus, it's still the patient's call. Okay? As long as the patient made the decision on a right state of mind, it is still the patient's call. Okay? So what do I mean by right state of mind? Hindi siya lasing, hindi siya baliw by the time he made the decision. Pero pag baliw siya, class, at saka sinabi niya, ay, ayaw ko nang magpa-CPR, let me sign the document. Okay? Parang out of the blue, naisip niya lang ganun. Okay? So class, hindi legit yung document, hindi yung valid. Pero if the patient decided on his prudent mind, in a right state of mind that he does not want it to be done, then you need to respect that. Okay? You need to respect that. Now, next is autonomy. Okay? So class, this is the summary of or another way of looking at the patient's rights. Now. Okay? This is actually the acronym PATIENTS. So privacy, autonomy, treatment refusal. The other as on the next slide. So class privacy, no? the very simple thing taught to us is to close the curtain. And then you know what? One thing, if you are in the ER also, be careful that if you're talking about sensitive topics, you're also keeping it to the minimum. Because what separates patients in the ER are usually curtains lang. Okay? 
So sometimes now you're talking about sex. Sometimes you're talking about sexual practices. Sometimes you're also talking about private matters. Let's say, for example, kabit niya. Or let's say, for example, pinag-uusapan niyo kung paano siya sinuntok ng asawa niya. So class, things like that needs to be kept to a minimum level. And then class, it's best for you to discuss it in a private room. Uh, it's best for you to discuss it in a private room. Okay? Alam nyo, privacy, no? Some, uh, I used to think that privacy is just a petty thing because what I was thinking in mind is that you are in a patient's room, so why bother about privacy? But you know, guys, when, when we think about privacy pala, no? okay? it goes as far as, for example, if I'm changing the clothes of the patient, I don't need to see the parts of the patient. Okay, so when I say privacy, you are even protecting the privacy of the patient towards you as a healthcare professional. Okay, tapos sabihin, sir, papano kung pareho kaming lalaki? Or papano kung pareho kaming babae? Still class privacy. Okay, when you are changing, for example, the gown of your female patients, okay, boys ha, wag, 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 wag excited to change the gown of the female patients. Okay, you might be at risk of, uh, what do you call this? sexual abuse or you know sexually related okay sexual misconduct or even sexual harassment no okay halimbawa ha ako male nurse i changed the gown of my female patient i did not touch my female patient i, I did not i'm not doing anything to my female patient but suddenly out of the blue she shouted rape or she shouted ay bastos tapos bigla akong sinampal Wala akong ginawa. Take note. But if there's nobody inside the room, dear students, if there's nobody inside the room, only me and the female patient, I am at risk of sexual harassment even if I did not do anything. Okay? So for example, pag sigaw niya, rape, tapos class nakita that she is half naked and then she is not covered, I might be liable in fact for sexual harassment. So that's why boys be careful. Ha? Boys be careful. Do not just volunteer to handle your female patients, especially here in our setting in the Philippines. And then if the culture are then if the culture is sensitive. Okay? Now, how about naman kung same sex? Eh, sir, pareho lang naman kaming babae, pareho lang naman kaming lalaki. Guys, take note that our society is already adapting to LGBTQ. And then, other than that, students, no, other than that, you need to respect the identity of the individual. Guys, picture if you're handling a high school student, grabe ang pag-value ng high school student, ng isang adolescent, or his body. Okay? So when you are changing the clothes, you can actually change the clothes without looking at the bare skin of your patient. How would you do it? Habang nag-change ka ng gown, guys, dapat may cover dito sa harap. Okay? That cover class could be, that cover could be the linens, that cover could in fact be the kumot of your patient. Okay? So be careful of that. Ah. That's the privacy of your patient. And you know what? Sometimes Filipino people are very shy to say it also, but they feel uncomfortable whenever their body parts are also exposed. Okay? Now picture, we are doing a abdominal surgery. Abdomen lang ha, abdomen. Oh, eh, yung pasyente ka sa OR bed, nakahiga lang naman yan eh. Tapos tulog na yan eh. If you are a negligent nurse, one thing that you can do is okay, let let it open, let let it be open. No? You might be thinking just let it be open. No? The, don't do anything about it even if the penis is visible, even if the vagina is visible. But as a nurse, you need to understand that it's the privacy of your patient. So dapat cover mo yung penis, cover mo yung vagina kasi yung ooperahan class is the abdomen. Eh sir, paano kung mag-i-insert ng catheter? Because it's one of the SOPs no, in abdominal surgery that there will be catheter insertion. So, magpag magkaganon guys na mag-i-insert tayo ng catheter in abdominal surgery, expose natin yung organ, expose natin ng penis by the time we are inserting the catheter. But after insertion of the catheter, what would you do? You cover it again. Ha? Cover it again. So, dapat nurses, you're very particular. Okay? Autonomy. So autonomy as I mentioned is the right to choose a provider and the plan. So for example, if the patient would come into the hospital, okay? for example, the patient said, my doctor is Dr. Estuesta. And then the nurse said, you know what, ma'am? We have Dr. Villanueva here. But the patient insisted, I want Dr. Estuesta. 
the patient has the right to choose doctor as to ETA. Okay? Right niya yan. But take note, not all doctors can enter all hospitals. Ha? Take note, ha? not all doctors can enter all hospitals. Because in the practice of medicine, they have what we refer to as your accreditation. Ah, uh, no. Sorry. The term pala is credentialing and privileging. The term class is credentialing and privileging. Okay? What do we mean by that? For example, Dr. Dr. Dativo. Dr. Dativo is privileged to access Hospital A, Hospital B, Hospital C. Pero she has not submitted her papers in Hospital D. So if her patient would go to Hospital D, we need to look for alternative doctors. Or if not, okay, we need to talk to the patient. No? We need to talk to the patient and tell the patient, hey, Dr. Dativo is not entering, is not um, admitting patients in this hospital. You have an option to choose an alternative doctor temporarily or you can transfer to other facilities. Right din po ng patient yan na mag-transfer sa other facilities. Okay? So, that goes as far as autonomy is concerned. Pagkatapos, pag-trip lang ng patient, halimbawa, this afternoon, 4 p.m., kailangan ng gamot. Eh, sabi ng patient, ayaw ko. As long as you've educated the patient, wala kang choice, eh, ayaw niya, eh, di ba? Okay? Right to autonomy. Then, right to refuse treatment. So, I've mentioned about that earlier. Then, another thing is right information. Right to information. This is actually a consumer responsibility. In other words, this is the responsibility of your patient. Okay? This is the responsibility of your patient. Okay? Now, what do we mean by that, guys? No? What do we mean by that? So, pag sinabi kong right information, prior to availing of the treatment, the patient needs to give accurate information to the healthcare professional. Okay? You know why? Di ba pag titingnan natin yung physical assessment natin? Or no? Pag titingnan ko pala yung health assessment nyo, your health assessment has two major components. The two major components of your health assessment is your interview and then your physical assessment. So plus it emphasizes that interview is important. What data do we gather during the interview? Is it subjective, um, subjective or objective? Subjective. 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 Okay. Sir. So plus, during the interview, we gather subjective data from our patients. Now, when we talk about this subjective data, if your patient would be lying, if your patient would not be telling the truth about the subjective data, there is a possibility that she will be mismanaged there is a possibility that she will be, be mismanaged. Simple example, di ba prior to x-ray class, ano yung tinatanong class, especially kapag kababaihan yung pasyente? Before you enter x-ray, ano yung tinatanong? If gabusong sila, sir. Yes, you're being asked if you have been pregnant or if you are pregnant right now. Now, if the patient would say, no, I'm not pregnant, and then the child is less than 20 weeks and then x-ray was done, there is a possibility that the radiation from the x-ray could in fact affect the child. Okay? So dapat class maintindihan ng pasyente that for them to receive quality care, they need to give us accurate and true information. Okay? Dalawa lang naman ang tarong dyan class eh. Ma'am, is there a possibility that you are pregnant right now? Ano? Ma'am, are you pregnant right now? That's question number one. Question number two, ma'am, is there a possibility that you are pregnant right now? In other words, hindi pa siya sure na pregnant siya, pero parang delayed siya at saka sex, active siya sa sex. So may possibility na pregnant siya. Okay? So that's one example why they need to provide accurate information. Next class, you need to educate your patient. Your patient has the right to education. Okay? Yung paulit-ulit nating sinasabi na diba, patient can refuse as long as the patient has been properly educated. Okay? The patient class can also, um, the patient class can, uh, uh, the patient I mean also deserves to receive adequate education. Uh, for example, your patient is having coughing. Hindi lang pa pwede nurses na you will just give medications to your patient. Other than medications, you also educate your patient. Sir, we can increase your oral fluid intake. Kasi pag marami tayong fluid na iniinom, our phlegm will become 
um, the, will become suffer. And then, sir, we need to reposition from time to time so that there will be no secretions that will be staying in your lungs or your airway. So you educate your patient. Even if you are giving medications, you tell them what are the actions of these medications, what are the side effects of these medications, and what are the cautions that your patient need to watch out for. It all goes back to health education. Huh? So, hindi pwede na, sir, bukas ang baba, tapos itong gamot. <laughs> ah, hindi pwede ganon. Huh? So, you need to educate your patient. Then, your patient has the right not to be restrained. Okay? Plus, pag sinabing restrained, mm, siguro we can be thinking of somebody na nakaposas. But then, in the clinical setting class, no, uh, we have different types of restraints. So, you have your mommy restraints. Okay? Sa setting natin dito sa Pilipinas, may mga time na ginagamit class yung cover ng unan as in the cover of your pillows um, and it is used to tie the patient to bed. Okay? It is used to tie the patient to bed. Now, your patient class has the right not to be restrained. Okay? Huwag kayong type ng nurse na, ay, ayaw kong uminom ng gamot. Sige ka dyan, sir, itatali kita sa bed. Hindi pwedeng ganyan. Ha? Hindi po pwedeng ganyan. In restraints, we have two types of restraints. You have physical restraints, and then you also have chemical restraints. Physical class, you use your tie, you use your clothing, and any other type of physical substances. In chemical students, you use your medicines. Uh, it's the use of medications to make the patient calm, to make the patient sleep. Okay? That's your chemical restraint. Eh, sir, bakit na pauso yung restraint kung hindi naman ginagamit? Class, in what instances do you think is it legal for us to use restraint? In what instances do you think is it legal for us to use restraints? If the patient is harming himself, sir, or okay. herself. Somebody said, okay, that's very good, Edgelson. So if the patient is presenting as a harm to himself, and then another one here mentioned, tricky, that if the patient is violent, okay? So class, actually, the criteria there is that if the patient presents to be a harm to self or others. Okay? Halimbawa, hinabol ka sa hallway, the patient ran after you, and then the patient is attempting to punch you. So the patient is a probable harm to you, so that patient need to be restrained. Okay? Or if the patient is violent, or if the patient, for example, tried to get a knife and then tried to stab himself, he is a threat to himself, so that patient need to be restrained. But take note that when I say restraint, it is not forevermore. Uh, hindi po yan forever na intervention. The restraint order of the physician is only good for 24 hours. Again, the restraint order of the physician is only good for 24 hours. After 24 hours, kailangan po siyang i-reassess ng physician para po ma-check ng physician kung kailanganin pa talaga ng pasyente natin ng restraint or not. Okay? So that's how it works no, in the setting. So guys, common yung ginagamit sa mental health setting, psychiatric units of the hospital. Okay? Then the next right, to be treated with confidentiality. So ibig sabihin, hindi mo pinagkakalat yung kaso ng pasyente sa iba. Hindi mo pinagchichismis, hindi mo pinagmamarites. Tapos your patient has the right to services. Okay? So students, not all hospitals would have all of the services. Take note that not all hospitals would have all of the services. For example, not all hospitals here would have MRI. Now, if your patient needs MRI, is it okay nga ba na pupunta siya sa other hospital for the MRI? Or hindi na lang siya natin i-MRI kasi hindi siya available? It is just kakadto sa ibang hospital sir, to avail MR ang M MRI. Okay, so guys, it's actually, hindi lang na pepede, but we need to facilitate actually. No? We need to facilitate that they will be able to avail of these services. Uh, so we need to facilitate that they will be able to be referred to that hospital. So pag sinabi kong facilitate, hahanapan mo siya ng ambulance, hahanapan mo siya ng driver, hahanapan mo siya ng kasamang nurse, ng kasamang doctor para lang makapunta siya sa ibang hospital to avail of the service that is not available in your respective healthcare setting. Okay? That's what we meant by your patient's right to services. Okay? So, other than that, you see, 
So the patient bill of rights class is actually a document now that provides patient with information on how they can reasonably expect to be treated during the course of treatment in the hospital. So parang ito yung expectation sa kanila. Okay? Expectations nila from us. But we need to take note that this document is not legally binding. And this document class is not legally binding. Pag sinabi kong patient's bill of rights, no, hindi naman po pwedeng abusuhin lang siya ng pasyente. At hindi po basta-bastang makakasuhan ang nurse kung patient's bill of rights lang po yung tinag-uusapan. It also provides goals and expectations for patient's treatment. And then recently, students, we are already using the term patient care partnership. Okay? Patient care partnership. Now, what is the reason why is it changed to patient care partnership? Because nga of the legal implications of rights. Diba, class, when I talk about rights, your rights is enshrined in the 1987 Constitution. And that right of yours, no, those rights of yours could not be taken away from you. And those rights of yours are legally binding ang sa 1987 Constitution. Pero sabi ko, diba, ang patient's bill of rights, hindi siya legally binding. Okay? So for that reason, no, para siguro to avoid confusion, yung term na rights na wala na, tapos yung ginagamit na lang commonly ngayon or ang pinapauso natin ngayon is your patient okay. care partnership. Okay? We are using the term patient care partnership. Okay? So those are the things that we are being used right now. Now, so these are the patient's bill of right in the Philippines and this is almost already commensurate with the patient's bill of rights that we have discussed na, among those acronym na patients na rin. Okay, so just read through this one, the patient's bill of rights of the Philippines. Now, do you have any questions in mind?